Okay, so I have uh, at this point uploaded a number of videos onto YouTube as well as um, posting a number of blogs where I have been addressing some key kind of concepts that I've been trying to share with people about magnetism, physics of psychology, and other things like spirituality. And what I wanted to do related to spirituality, what I wanted to do is to make another audio video to complement everything that I've put, all the YouTube videos that I've put, as well as everything that I've written on blogs that might be related, and specifically um, relating back to magnetism, the, the force of magnetism, the fundamental force of magnetism, and the two um, spins of magnetism, the clockwise spin, the counterclockwise spin, the positive, negative spin, the um, polarity of magnetism. And I just want to give some drawings, some examples of my kind of sense or theory or understanding of how it plays out, um, how these structures, these um, figure eight cross patterns or the, how this a sense of how this figure eight cross uh, fractal pattern works, what it looks like. I did a YouTube video on the uh, magnetic currents, a, a, a good drawing of what that looks like or might look like in the human body, the two hemispheres of the physical body. So now I just want to kind of go through the whole thing and just give a sense of what this pattern looks like and why it's important and how we can utilize it to define and describe the underlying magnetic patterns that are shaping all the structures and forms that we see in nature and in life and you know in human life human beings so um, I want to start with that kind of general kind of sense of of this audio video and then I just want to start at the beginning uh, of the drawing and just say that this drawing is essentially inspired by the work of Albert Roy Davis and Walter C. Rawls and their kind of their theory that um, of magnetic currents or of you know two distinct magnetic forces or magnetic spins. Uh, you know, magnetic polarity that, that actually have two different effects, two distinct effects. And so I want to start with um, this, this uh, what I have here, the, the whole picture is I have a hand and the fingers and the thumb and so on and a range of uh, illustrations within this whole diagram that show, that illustrate what it is I'm trying to communicate. So let's start with this finger. First, the, what it is, what the, the magnetic forces, how they operate, um, they, what they form, how they flow, it's two forces, but these two forces flow in this, in this figure eight cross or figure or, or lemnus gate cross fractal pattern and this is a this is the just a sense of what these patterns how they could be mapped out or diagrammed on just within a finger and if you look closely what you can see is the actual patterns the the figure eight patterns the force patterns the magnetic force patterns for the the, dis the, the distinct bones as well as the joints in the finger. And um, so that's kind of the first thing that I wanted to show, um, that, that basic pattern. And there's another, um, here's another kind of iteration of it, just to illustrate that what the, the, the magnetic forces, the, the way they play out as these figure eight cross patterns they, they they are fact fractal patterns and that they can be scaled down to you know any 
uh, you know, any kind of magnitude or scaled up to any magnitude, and you can just continue fractaling one with one figure eight cross within another, and so on. And that's kind of to illustrate that. Now, um, for there's a, another example which I was mentioning about the bones. Here you can see that when you look at a bone, it actually is a figure eight pattern. So, and I do believe that it that basic pattern or structure or form is shaped by this figure eight um, pattern, magnetic pattern. Um, so now that's just the, the kind of beginning point that, that this fractal pattern of figure eight crosses and coming down we can kind of um, we can get into some more. I mentioned the bone, the bones here that would be mapped out by the figure eights as well as you know any of the bone structures, but we can go and look at forms such as the face, the human face, or, or any animal face, or even at the animal body, and we can see, we can find the, this figure eight pattern and these force patterns at play. And so I think it's very vital to recognize these patterns and to you know do what we can to map them out accurately because if we can map these patterns out, uh, these forces, how they actually shape and form the body, if this theory is correct, then it will give us a much more complete and accurate knowledge of um, how the human being is is structured and function and functions. So. Just to give an, an overview of what these magnetic currents, how they look, what they look like, or how they operate, what you have is you have two magnetic currents. You have one magnetic current that spins clockwise, and then you have one another magnetic current which spins counterclockwise. So you have these two magnetic currents, and as I said before, that this is the basic theory of the research of Albert Roy Davis and Walter C. Rawls. Now, when you take these two magnetic currents and you overlay them over the human body, you take a human body and you map out and, and you map out a human body with these magnetic currents, you can see two hemispheres. You can see that the human body not just has two hemispheres, you know, brain in the brain, it has two hemispheres or even you could say two lobes for the entire physical body. And one of these is has a clockwise spin of force and the other has a counterclockwise spin. And these are the two magnetic currents and if you you can map these over um, theoretically over the whole physical body and define all of the underlying magnetic forces as well as you know the the electrical forces and frequency forces that shape and pattern all the substances of the human body um, and that includes not only solids and liquids but gases and plasmas until you have this form this human form so there are two polarities, one on the left side, one on the right side, one that's clockwise, one that's counterclockwise. But also what's interesting is when you look at these magnetic currents, what, as was said, they each have spins. So here you have this, this diagram of these, this force spinning along this finger and this magnetic current either spinning a force clockwise or counterclockwise okay so you have these spins so they're not just polarity they're not just forces they're not just currents they're they're actually spins okay and they form structures structures once again based on these figure eight patterns whether that's bones or a human form or a face or even you know any number of other kind of structures or patterns based on that basic principle. Now, one thing that's important to recognize is when you look at there's this diagram, these two, the, these two figure eight cross patterns right here. If you look within this lower pattern, what you'll see is these lich, 
Lichtenberg figures, which are these figures of electrical current flow. And I, I think that it's possible to map out within these figure eight patterns the actual precise flow of electricity all throughout uh, reality um, and the human being as well. And another point that I think is worth considering is the possibility that flowing around or between these figure eight uh, cross fractal patterns are electrical current sheets and that these may be very, um, they may be pockets of electricity in between or around these or with or or and or within these magnetic uh, figure eight patterns um, and when you look at this diagram right here you can see that this has this kind of there's something familiar about this it has this same structure or pattern of so many shapes in nature but I think this you, you can also see this kind of pattern in the fingerprint world um, on, the, on our fingertips and I think that this is a, a sense of how this, these magnetic uh, patterns kind of fractal and spin and kind of um, nestle one within the other and as I was saying when these currents spin what they're doing is they're taking all the, these forces are taking all the substances of our human form that is composed of and weaving them together into a whole kind of structure form pattern or system now when you go further and you say well how do you map this out you know if if this if this is true um or or to or to step back a little bit and to say well okay first before you go down to that question you say well where did you get the idea that this kind of model describes all of reality? Well, for there's a couple reasons. There's the human form, which is one, you know, it's right within reach and all the natural animal structures and patterns. But there's another one. There are galaxies. Galaxies follow this, this same basic pattern or model. Um, that's how they're structured. Uh, the sun, the planets... Um, and I would argue even these large, vast uh, areas of space probably have these forces and patterns within them. Um, so that's kind of the basic theory. And, and also that the concept that there's such a thing as magnetic materials and non-magnetic materials, I think that that whole theory is erroneous. I think that that there are that all materials are magnetic to gr to greater or lesser degrees or extents and they there and that there are all kinds of different forms of magnetic relationships now this final uh part of the image that i want to show you is lines that are kind of mapped out over a finger that are um where i'm kind of roughly beginning with the fingerprint whorls so the the point is i think that in the fingerprint world uh of the human hand there may well be the starting point for mapping out these magnetic patterns forces or currents uh for the whole human body and this is kind of where you come back to this figure eight cross pattern here um and once it, once we can create this, we can create 3D models of this for the human body. Um, and in any way kind of test or prove or confirm this, then we can go on and do so much more in other areas. So I just want to put this out there. I want to make it available. I want people to think about it, especially artistic people and others, uh, technical kind of computer people and and see what you can do to map this out mathematically or three-dimensionally um you know in cu computer models thanks